from Gaza. As we continue our coverage, we're joined now by two guests here in our firehouse studio, Norman Finkelstein, professor of political science at DePaul University in Chicago. His latest book is called Beyond Chutzpah, on the misuse of anti-Semitism and the abuse of history. And on the telephone, we're joined by Josh Block, director of media affairs for APAC. That's the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee speaking to us on the line from Connecticut. Um, Josh Block, let's begin with you. Your response uh, and the latest, the last thing that Chris McGreal said, saying human rights groups, uh, the Palestinian leadership, Mahmoud Abbas, talking about this as collective punishment and a crime against humanity. Well, uh, clearly the, uh, the concern is uh, the reaction from those same folks when it comes to uh, the murder and kidnap of Israeli uh, citizens. From any uh, perspective, uh, American or otherwise, uh, an attack inside Israel unprovoked that uh, resulted in uh, the murder of two Israelis and not the capture, Amy, but the kidnapping uh, of an Israeli soldier uh, is in and of itself an act of war. Uh, and clearly the Israelis tried for several days, 48 hours, 36 hours of intense diplomacy with the aid of the United States, uh, the French, and I should add that this young man who's been kidnapped is also a French citizen, uh, to, to secure the release from, uh, from Hamas, the terrorist group that, that has him. And by the way, in, in high irony, uh, the government of uh, the Palestinian Authority, run by this same terrorist group, so a government that's charged with fighting terrorism, is itself a terrorist group that's responsible for his kidnapping. So after 48 hours and 36 hours of, of difficult and unproductive diplomacy, clearly the Israelis felt that they needed to, uh, to act in their own defense. Uh, and I think the question is, uh, what, what is the reaction from the same, same human rights groups when it comes to the condemnation of terrorism or, or other acts? And clearly, and I don't speak for the Israelis, but they must have felt that this was an important uh, thing to do to help isolate and prevent the movement of this uh, terrorist, uh, terrorist groups from removing the captive uh, or kidnapped Israeli soldier around the, uh, the, uh, the Gaza Strip. Professor Finkelstein. Well, I think it is useful to begin with what the human rights groups have to say about this. Um, let's leave aside the background for a moment and look narrowly at the incident that triggered the Israeli invasion. Let's see what the Hamas did not do or the Palestinian militants did not do. Number one, they did not liquidate the corporal, which Israel routinely does, namely its political assassinations. That's a war crime under international law. Israel routinely does that. Hamas did not do that to the corporal. Number two, they didn't kill the corporal while trying to arrest him. Israel routinely does that. If you look in July 2005, that Selim, the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, they put out a very hefty report entitled, Take No Prisoners. And the report shows Israel routinely, during so-called arrest operations, kills Palestinians, documents a case of a Palestinian who was wounded on the ground, no weapon, Israel killed him. Hamas didn't do that to the corporal. It's said by, this, uh, by Paul, it said that they took him hostage. They kidnapped him. Okay, Israel routinely uh, takes Palestinians, Lebanese hostage. In fact, Israel was the only country in the world in 1997 which legalized hostage taking. The liberal uh, head of the Israeli High Court, uh, Aharon Barach, he said it's legal, it's legitimate under international law to take what he called bargaining chips in order to get prisoners, Israeli prisoners, being held by the Lebanese. The, the decision was reversed in 2000, but Israel continued to hold Palis, excuse me, Lebanese hostages until 2004. So at worst, Hamas is being accused of what Israel legalized and routinely does. And finally, let's talk about those 9,000 Palestinians who are effectively hostages being held by Israel. 1,000 of them are administrative detainees. You're talking about prisoners. Yes, administrative detainees who are being held without any charges or trial. And the other 8,000 are being held after military courts have convicted them, almost always on the basis of confessions which were extracted by torture. 
So if we're going to look simply at the numbers, we have one hostage on the Palestinian side, and effectively, we have about 9,000 on the Israeli side. We're going to break, and then we'll uh, get a response from Josh Block of APAC. Dr. Norman Finkelstein is professor at DePaul University in Chicago. Back in a minute. Rahima Haj here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over 450 radio and television stations around the country on Pacifica, NPR, Low Power FM, college and community radio stations, public access TV, and PBS stations, and both TV satellite networks on Dish Network, Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, 9410, Link TV, and on Direct TV, Channel 375. And we are video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman here with Juan Gonzalez. We're talking about the siege in Gaza. Our guests are Josh Block. Uh, spokesperson for APAC, which is the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, speaking to us from Connecticut, and Professor Norman Finkelstein teaches political science at DePaul University in Chicago, is in our firehouse studio. Juan? Uh, Josh Block, before break, uh, Norman Finkelstein was talking about the lack of proportionality and looking at the issue of, of prisoners and, and hostages on both sides. Your response to that? Well, I think the first thing that, uh, that uh, he said was that we should ignore the context in which this uh, attack took place, and I think that's a major flaw with uh, his, uh, his commentary over time. I'm not surprised to hear him uh, talk about uh, the things in those terms, considering he's called Hezbollah, which is the number one killer of Americans outside of, Al outside of Al Qaeda, a heroic organization. Uh, you know, ultimately, uh, the question for Israel is, what is its responsibility as a government? And any government, whether it's ours or theirs, uh, has, the, has the duty to protect its citizens. Uh, you know, Hamas and Hezbollah and, the, and the Islamic Jihad, other terrorist groups, have been conducting an unremitting campaign of terrorism against Israeli citizens. Hamas is an organization that uh, fundamentally believes deep in its core uh, that Israel does not have the right to exist. When they talk about an occupation, they're talking about Tel Aviv. Uh, that's why when this, uh, this terrorist attack took place, it took place not in the Gaza Strip or in the West Bank, but inside Israel itself. Uh, they, inf they, they infiltrated Israel, uh, digging a tunnel from underneath the home uh, into the country of Israel, where they attacked uh, uh, soldiers who were not engaged in an offensive uh, operation against any Palestinian. They, they murdered two of them, and they kidnapped one of them, and they're holding him a captive hostage. Uh, that is an act of war. It's a provocation, and it comes as the culmination of months and months of uh, terrorist attacks and uh, rocket attacks against excuse me, against Israeli citizens uh, who are not engaged in any offensive uh, effort, who are simply going ahead and living their lives. And that kind of terrorism is unacceptable and forces a response from, from any responsible government. The, the, the Palestinian Authority has the responsibility to secure the release of this individual, this, this soldier. And failing that, the international community has to continue to put pressure on the Palestinian Authority for, to fulfill those obligations. Again, Hamas is the government of the Palestinian Authority, and it, has, it is sanctioning and conducting terrorism. That's not an acceptable situation, and it cuts against the entire grain of fundamental international conduct. Norman Finkelstein, I'd like you to respond to that, and also the timing of this operation coming hours after Fatah and Hamas announced that they had uh, agreed on a document that implicitly recognized Israel within its 1967 borders. 
Well, I want to first take note that uh, Josh didn't respond to any of my claims about Israel taking hostages.